I would like to give a special shout out to all my patrons who have supported my hobby and passion even more. Thank you so much for everything. Hi everyone, uh, Patek here. We have arrived at the end of March and today's video will be my March book haul video. In the month of March, I managed to acquire 12 physical books. So as you can probably guess, this is not as big as the number that I got for the month of February, which, well, to be fair, that's more than 70 books. That will never happen again. So for me, uh, 12 physical books in a month is still very impressive and I'm really thankful for this. And believe me, there are some really great looking books here. And the first one that I want to show you is a series, well, a very beloved series on Booktip Community. And it is probably the series that has been recommended to me the most. And that is the Sun Eater series by Christopher Rocchio. So yes, I finally got Empire of Silence hardcover. I know that this is super rare and it's only thanks to two people on Instagram that told me about this. Both of them are Gil and also Angie. Thank you so much to both of you. It's only because of both of you that I'm finally able to acquire this one. And a fun fact, uh, Christopher Rocchio uh, offered me a copy of Empire of Silence hardcover, but uh, the shipping fee to my place, apparently from his place, just for this one book, costs almost $90. So yeah, that is impossible. I cannot afford that. So I'm really thankful that despite this insane shipping fee, I'm still able to acquire this from Book Outlet for only $10. That is crazy. <laughs> Just crazy. And you know what? Uh, because of the insane shipping fee of this one, Christopher Rocchio decided to send me uh, a book plate. Ta-da! This is uh, seven, seven book plates for possibly the rest of the series. Because Christopher Rocchio has mentioned that the series will either conclude at book number six or book number seven. So yeah. And at the back of this really cool art, Christopher Rocchio wrote, Dear Patrick, sorry again about those shipping costs. I honestly had no idea. These at least should set you up for the whole series. Yours, Christopher Rocchio. See? And of course, other than Empire of Silence, I also got the second book, Howling Dark. So yeah, I bought this as well. Yeah, I took a risk here and I have a good feeling about it because so many people told me that this is basically, well, either Red Rising or Dune meets Patrick Rothfuss, which is, well, you know what, that is a very high praise. I love those series, especially Red Rising and The Kingkiller Chronicle. And also, I got the third book, uh, Demon in White. This is the third book in the Sun Leader series. And also, Kingdoms of Death is currently on its way to me right now. My co-blogger, one of my co-bloggers and my best friend, Celeste has bought it for me and I'm basically waiting for it to arrive right now. And you know what? The cover art of this entire series, all of them are super gorgeous. Some of the best that I've seen and it's even more amazing because uh, the first book, Empire of Silence, this is done by Sam Weber, uh, one of my favorite artists, but apparently the rest of the series are done by a different artist. If I didn't research about it, I don't think I would have realized because they are so similar in style and design. This is an example of cover art change done right. And, oh, this is still in, wrapped in plastic. You know what? I'm going to do an ASMR here. Is this how it works? <laughs> so yeah wow this is beautiful i have heard amazing things about this series i don't know why i even postponed reading this series for so long and the cover art for the second book the third book the fourth book and also well the rest of the series it's done by kieran yenner i think kieran yenner did an excellent job on the cover art of sun eater series especially for howling dark i really love this cover art amazing I'm really hoping that I will be able to start reading this series within this year, but if not, I will make Sun Eater a top priority series for me to start and finish within 2023. The Sun Eater series will be concluded within next year, so you know, might as well. So yeah, this is the first three books that I got, Empire of Silence, Howling Dark, and also Demon in White. And for those of you who don't know about Sun Eater, this is the premise of Empire of Silence. It was not his war. The galaxy remembers him as a hero, the man who burned every last alien Kelsin from the sky. They remember him as a monster, the devil who destroyed the sun, casually annihilating four billion human lives, even the emperor himself against imperial orders. But Hadrian was not a hero. He was not a monster. He was not even a soldier. On the wrong planet at the right time for the best reasons, Hadrian Marlow starts down a path that can only end in fire. He flees his father and the future as a torturer only to be left stranded on a strange backwater world. 
forced to fight as a gladiator and navigate the intrigues of a foreign planetary court, Hadrian must fight a war he did not start for an empire he does not love against an enemy he will never understand. I honestly have read only the first chapter of this one just to have a taste of Christopher Rocchio's prose and I am just blown away already. I have a feeling, I have a good feeling I will love Sunny the series whenever I get to it. And then the next book that I got, this is uh, The Thousand Deaths of Ardo Ben. This is the first book in The Kingdom of Grit. I have owned the second book, The Shattered Realm of Ardor Ben, and then the third book, The Last Lies of Ardor Ben, already for quite a while now. But I didn't own the first book, so I thought I might as well get this one. And yeah, this title, the title of this series, must have been inspired by the lies of Lok Lamora. There is no doubt about it. <laughs> and this is supposedly a heist epic fantasy. The premise is Ardor Ben is no ordinary thief, rakish, ambitious, and master of widely complex heists. He styles himself as a ruse artist extraordinary. When he gets hired for his most daring ruse yet, Ardor knows he'll need more than quick wit and sleight of hand. Assembling a dream team of forgers, disguisers, schemers, and thieves, he sets out to steal from the most powerful king the realm has ever known. But it soon becomes clear there is much more at stake than fame and glory. Art and his team might just be the last hope for human civilization. The cover art is done by Ben Zweifel and it is designed by Lauren Panepinto. I love this cover art. I think the previous cover art to uh, The Thousand Deaths of Other Ben was illustrated by Tommy Arnold, but I think they did a cover change to the entire series. But I'm not sure when I will get to this one, but I'm always up for heist fantasy. And then I received this book from my co-blogger, T.S. This is Don't Shard by Brandon Sanderson. This is the hardcover edition. And look, this is actually so cute. It is a small hardcover. I think the size is almost similar to the mass market paperback. But yeah, I love Don't Shard. This one takes place after Oldbringer, but before A Rhythm of War. It is one of my favorite novelas. And yeah, I really love this book. And as some of you probably know already, I am planning to collect every Sanderson's book. So yeah, this is a great addition to my collection. And after that, TS also sent me something truly amazing and it is Age of Ash, the Goldsboro edition. So this is the first book in the Kitama trilogy by Daniel Abraham. And look at the spray edges. So beautiful. It is red. And I think, I think most of you know already that Daniel Abraham is one of my favorite authors and his fantasy work, in my opinion, is one of some, some of the most underrated fantasy series right now. Uh, the Long Price Quartet and Dagger and the Coin, both of them are incredible series and I think they deserve more love. I am, I've been looking forward to reading Age of Ash for quite a while now. I think the cover art by Daniel Doshu is, uh, looks amazing. And I definitely will be reading this one within this year. And speaking of Edge of Ash, I got another copy of Edge of Ash, but this one is sent to me by Orbit Books. There is no difference with uh, this one and the previous one. This is the back, the back cover, this is the spine, and also this is the premise. Kitamar is a center of trade and wealth, an ancient city with a long bloody history where countless thousands live and their stories unfold. Alice is simply a petty thief from the slums of Long Hill, but when her brother is murdered, she sets out to discover who killed him and why. The more she unearths about him, the more she learns about herself, and the truths she finds are more dangerous than knives. Swept up in an intrigue as deep as the roots of Kitamar, where the secrets of the lowest born can sometimes topple thrones, the story Alice chooses will have the power to change everything. And I know that Daniel Abraham is very famous for his work on The Expanse together with Ty Frank. And again, as I said, I think his fantasy works deserve more love and I have a feeling that I will love this one as well. And when Orbit sent me this book, apparently uh, there is a message from Daniel Abraham himself. So this is what he said. Dear reader, I started off as a fantasy writer. I did the long prize quartet and the dagger and the coin. Then I got a little sidetrack writing a space opera called The Expanse with a friend of mine and making the TV show based on. That was a good project, but fantasy is still first among genres for me. And well, I'm back. The Kitama Trilogy is three complete standalone but closely related stories that all happen in the same city during the same year. The first book, Age of Ash, starts with a young woman who is the lowest of the low in Kitamar losing someone she loves to violence, and it spirals up from there with magic and unrequited love and desperate schemes and old gods walking the streets. It's a fantasy adventure novel, and it's also a novel about loss and about going on in the wake of loss. That part is not fantasy, that is just the world. The Kitama Trilogy is one of the most ambitious projects I've taken on, and Age of Ash is the beginning of it. I hope it works for you, and I appreciate you taking the time to give it a shot. See? And another book I got from Orbit Books, this is The Justice of Kings by Richard Swan. I finally own the hardcover now. This is the first book in Empire of the Wolf Trilogy. I have already done a full spoiler free review for this book. I will just attach the review uh, in the description down below and also over here. 
And but yeah, I really love this one. I cannot wait for the second book. It is totally addictive. A great story about moral law and justice. I love the justice of kings very much. And the next three books I'm going to show you are also published fantasy books. The first one is Of Darkness and Light by Ryan Cahill. This is the hardcover edition. And well, I think Ryan Cahill is becoming very popular right now, especially among self-published fantasy community. And I am looking forward to reading Of Darkness and Light because I enjoyed Of Blood and Fire, but I think, well, The Fall was even better than Of Blood and Fire. And many people have actually said that Of Darkness and Light is significantly better than the previous two books. Well, one novel and one novella. And you know, you should really see uh, this, <laughs> the personalized page on this because this is absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> this is Choco Boy. Look at the drawing. <laughs> and in here, Ryan Cahill said, I tried to draw Choco Boy. For some reason, he looks angry. I'm an author, not an artist. And thank you so much for your support. And at, and at the top, he wrote of Patrick and Leo, the adventures of Choco Boy. <laughs> and Ryan Cahill has decided something that I'm always grateful for, and that is the story so far section. In here, he wrote the detailed recap, the detailed summary of the fall and also of blood and fire. This way, I can just jump into this one whenever I'm in the mood. And I think it will definitely be within this year because, yeah, I want to find out why this one is so highly praised among its readers. And just like always, this one has a special uh, naked hardcover look. Ta-da! So pretty. And the next one that I want to show you, this is The Heart of the Bloodstone by Filina Wood. This one finally arrived to my place. So I did the cover reveal and also a, free, a freebie for the ARC edition of uh, The Heart of the Bloodstone on my channel a few months ago. And I'm glad that I finally got this copy because this cover art by Felix Ortiz looks gorgeous. And I don't know when I will get to this one yet, but I am looking forward to it. I mean, take a look at this. This is so beautiful. I think this is one of uh, Felix Ortiz's finest cover art so far. And the naked hardcover looks even more beautiful because this, look at this. See? Crazy how beautiful this is. Ta-da! And the last of published fantasy book that I got somehow has another cover art with a dragon in it. <laughs> and this is Ascendant by Michael R. Miller. This is the first book in Songs of Chaos series. I think this will be a series of four books. I have owned the second book as well. It is titled uh, Unbound. And this is another gorgeous cover art. This one doesn't have any uh, dust jacket. But considering how much I love classic fantasy told with a modern voice, I think I will love Ascendant as well. This is the premise of Ascendant. Holt Cook was never meant to be a dragon rider. He has always served the Order Hall of the Crack dutifully, keeping their kitchen pots clean, until he discovers a dark secret. Dragons do not tolerate weakness among their kin, killing the young they deem flawed. Moved by pity, Hope defies the Order, rescues a doom egg, and vows to protect the blind dragon within. So this is the blind dragon. But the scourge is rising, undead hordes roam the land, spreading the blight and leaving destruction in their wake. The dragon riders are being slaughtered and betrayal lurks in the shadows. Holt has one chance to survive. He must cultivate the mysterious power of his dragon's magical core, a unique energy which may tip the balance in the battles to come and prove to the world that a servant is worthy after all. So yeah, I think this will be a great underdog and dragon rider story. I am so looking forward to reading Ascendant. I think this one, I have a feeling I will be reading it within this year. And this is sign too. Sometimes the world needs a little chaos. <laughs> And the last book that I got within this month, this is the Illuminate box for February. So this box is titled Bad Blood. And this box uh, featured plenty of items and I'm going to show them to you now. And the first one that I'm going to show you, this is a Bad Bomb. I never use Bad Bomb in my life. And you know what? I'm looking forward to trying this. Uh, this is a Butterfly Dust Bad Bomb created by Little Heart Gifts. And this is inspired by the poison Yelena is given by Valak in Poison Study. So yeah, I don't know when, but you know what, I definitely will try this because I have seen a lot of people enjoying using Bad Boom. <laughs> and then I also got the Cell Station Tumblr. This Tumblr is inspired by A Memory Called Empire by Arkady Martin. And this is done by Forensics and Flowers. The artwork is done by Forensics and Flowers. And then, and then, the, and then the next item is a pouch. Ta-da! Lo if longing is madness, then none of us are sane. This is inspired by uh, Cryer's War by Nina Varela. And this is, once again, designed by Chetty Nora. Chetty Nora is a great artist. If you haven't uh, checked out her Instagram page, you should do it. And then I got an Alex and Henry Magnetic Coins. Ta -da. This artwork is done by Monolime. Monolime is the artist behind uh, the interior artworks in Empire of the Vampire by Jay Kristoff. 
And finally, the last item on this box before we talk about the book, uh, this is a Medusa a Shield Trick or Tray. I'm going to open it now. Ooh. See, this is beautiful. Again, I definitely cannot use this because this is too beautiful to use. The artwork is done by Rachel Ross. And finally, the book itself, this is A River Enchanted by Rebecca Ross. This is an Irish-inspired adult fantasy, and you know what? This is so beautiful. Ta-da! This is the spray edges. Red, red, and this is the spine. And there is a custom, a special end paper here. See? So pretty. With a custom design on the naked hardcover as well. This is, Illumicret has done a terrific job on this. And this is the premise of A River Enchanted. Enchantments runs deep on the magical Isle of Cadence. The capricious spirits that live there find mirth in the lives of the humans who call the land home. But that mischief turns to malevolence as girls begin to go missing. Adaira, heiress of the East, knows the spirit only answer to a bard's music, enticing them to return the missing girls. But there is only one bard capable of drawing the spirits forth by song. Her childhood enemy, Jack Tamerlane. He hasn't stepped foot on Cadence in 10 long years, content to study music at the mainland university. But as Jack and Idara reluctantly work together, it becomes apparent the trouble with the spirit is far more sinister than first thought and an older, darker secret lurks beneath the surface, threatening to undo them all. So yeah, I think this is an adult fantasy book about magic, romance, and music. And before I forget this, and before I forget this art on the end paper is done by Mistil, uh, the in art. This ended my first term as a rep for Illumicrate. I have been doing this for four months and apparently I will be doing this for another four months with Illumicrate. So yeah, expect me to do more Illumicrate unboxing for the next four months as well. I am really excited about this because the books they send, even if they were never in my radar at the first place, almost all of them intrigue me and you know what? They are all beautiful. I think they are beautifully designed books. And if you haven't checked out Illumicrate, make sure to do it. I have a discount code of Patrick5 and you can use this code for their three or six months uh, subscription. I highly, highly recommend you to check it out. I highly, highly recommend you to check it out. And once again, thank you so much to Illumicrate for sending me this book. And of course, thank you so much to all the publishers, the authors, and also my friends who sent me, well, who keep on sending me books. Seriously, thank you so much. They never get old. So yeah, that's it for today's video. That's my March book haul. And do let me know what you think about these books. Do you spot any books that looks interesting to you? And which one, in your opinion, that I should read as soon as possible? As always, thank you so much for watching and thank you for your support. Bye-bye.